you guys ever just decide to dedicate the entire month of October to talking about rock and metal related horror movies, and you decide to call it Metal Ween, and then almost immediately you're like, ah shit, I should have called this Rocktober. Oh well, live and learn. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matt, sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Rocktober Blood. <sighs> Hello, rock stars. I'm called Matt, here for another round of Metal Ween. Last time we looked at the story of a guitarist who turned into a murderer, but today we're looking at the story of a singer who turned into a murderer. Rocktober Blood was released in 1984 from writer-director couple Ferd and Beverly Sebastian, the pair behind such classics as Gator Bait. Although this is one of their few films where Ferd doesn't receive directing credit, which makes this some good old-fashioned female-directed horror. The actors in the movie aren't much to write home about. Hell, the fourth build actor was also the wardrobe department. It's one of those productions. Even the DVD distributor didn't seem to care about these actors as they fucked up the lead's name on the back of the box. Also, something not uncommon to a film like this is a handful of alternate titles. This one's also called Rock Kill. R R Rock Kill? Rock Kill? Rockle. So let's see what happens when rock musicians rise from the grave. But, but they're evil this time. This is Rocktober Blood. The film starts with a band that really wants to be Led Zeppelin. Yeah, they're still less derivative than Greta Van Fleet. This is Billy, the very alive lead singer. He's been using his fame to trick women into sleeping with him in exchange for, like, favors in the industry. Which is a shitty thing to do, but, you know, at least he's not a murderer or anything. <laughs> huh. Spoke too soon, I guess. And while he's busy going full Silent Night, Deadly Night, the editor decides we need to keep cutting back to some titties. How can we expect audiences to pay attention to murder if we don't slip in a little T and A? Billy enjoys a nice little pipe of crack while listening to his back-masked message, which I'm sure is a square on metal ween bingo. He's spotted trying to kill his girlfriend by the night guard, and I guess this guard is just completely unarmed and also a total fucking coward, because he runs away when Billy chases him. Dude, your security, this is your job. Cut to two years later, and Billy's old band, now going by Rocktober Blood, is on a tour. And on the one-year anniversary of Billy's execution. Ah, uh, no. Our judiciary system does not run that fast, especially when you're dealing with something as delicate as executions. Billy probably has five or six more years on death row. Anyways, Lynn, the girlfriend Billy nearly killed, is now the band's frontman. And despite taking a ban from a murderer who almost killed her and telling this reporter their show will feature smoke and blood and guts, she sounds like. How do I even describe this? It's like half assed heart? Or like. Quarter-assed Pat Benatar? Their masked dancer catches Lynn backstage, but oh no, it's Billy! G spoilers Convinced she's just seeing things, her manager, Chris, sends her off for a weekend at her cabin in the woods, and we get an obnoxiously long scene of her wandering around the forest. Her 
Her dancers are out there with her, which makes them a bunch of women in a cabin, the most original setup for a horror movie I've ever heard. Billy even bothers to call her with a pretty odd message. I want your hot, steaming pussy blood all over my face. Hold up! That sounds a lot more like you want to eat pussy while she's on her period than it does the threat of murder. Anyways, hot girls in a boat. Hope you enjoy it, because it sure takes a long time. Like, Billy's here watching them, but he doesn't do anything, so... Yeah, this is just here to eat up about two minutes of screen time. Billy does finally get a kill by drowning one of the dancers in the jacuzzi. And a uh, little nudity, too. You know, who doesn't like a good bath scene while Billy chops up the other living girl in the basement and puts her in the quietest trunk ever. Billy finds Lynn in the bathtub with the perfect opportunity to kill her, so he hides in the closet to scare her. Never thought I'd say this about an undead mass murdering rock star, but what a dork. Oh, but try to figure this one out. Lynn gets a knife and stabs who she thinks is Billy, but then says, Chris! But then we immediately cut to Chris with absolutely no stab wounds, perfectly fine. And this scene was so dark and blurry, they don't even show Chris on screen. Like the actor was missing that day or something. So if you miss her saying this, you'd never know she stabbed him. And I guess this is as good a time as ever to point out how consistently shitty the lighting is in this movie. Like, it is a problem in nearly every scene. He thought it was Billy I. <laughs> Harper? <laughs> He's been dead for two years. No, the beginning of the film clearly established he got arrested two years ago, but was executed one year ago. But for the rest of the movie, everyone just keeps saying he's been dead for two years, which is not what the beginning of the movie set up. Also, if they don't believe Billy was here, how do they explain the two missing dancers? Honestly, if Lynn really stabbed Chris, shouldn't she be under suspicion of killing them? Although they only mention one of the dancers being missing. Donna's missing too. Donna's missing now? Fuck the other girl, I guess. Lynn wants to dig up Billy's body despite everyone telling her not to. I think there's probably a process you could go through for this, like getting a body excavated legally if you suspect someone faked their own death. I mean, it's probably a pain in the ass with a thousand miles of red tape, but it's weird no one even suggests doing that. I found the grave. What do you think? I was at the funeral, remember? Mmm, do mass murderers get funerals? I mean, I assume a few do, but I'd rather just dump the fuckers in the ground and be done with it. Lynn sees Billy alive and attacking her, but Chris sees only a skeleton. Is Billy really alive or has Lynn lost it? Hey, hey, Chris, there, there's two women missing, and your girlfriend is talking about seeing her dead serial killer boyfriend. Maybe for everyone's safety, you should take her somewhere, like, like a hospital, because she might not be okay mentally. She might be the one killing people. But I guess we get pretty definitive proof that Billy is absolutely the killer when he kills a girl while Lynn is still at the graveyard with Chris. And he's using a clothing iron, which seems like a cool setup for a kill, but they cut away before the cool part. Oh, but you gotta get that sick-ass face paint going, though. Rock and roll! And I'm gonna take you to hell with me. Oh, come on, Billy. Martin at least offered to send the people he was killing to heaven. Ah, uh, but there's a twist. This is Billy's twin brother who framed him for the murders. Haven't you figured it out yet? Day. No, you. You killed the wrong man. Oh my god. You identified my dearly beloved brother, Billy I. Harper. A fucking identical twin plot twist? You're telling me in all the time Billy was on trial, no one ever went, Hey, it says right here you have an identical twin brother. Uh, are you sure it couldn't have been him at the scene of the crime? Anyway, Billy's twin reveals he wrote all the hit music. And guess what his name is? Go ahead, guess. I'm John. Motherfucking Johnny. I guess they're sort of going for a Phantom of the Opera type thing? 
Donnie talks about how he wrote songs for Lynn and they haven't been performing them right, so he's gonna make sure they do. And what do you do if you can't get a good guitar solo for your rock and roll movie? Just drown it out with audience noise. <laughs> And Johnny really gets this band back to its half-assed Led Zeppelin roots. And he kills a girl on stage. How are there any dancers left? That's like the fourth one he's killed. I'm starting to think Johnny has some real problems with women because he's only killed one dude in this movie. Also, he cuts this girl's entire head off with a knife. That doesn't seem possible. And Lynn performs an entire number without telling anyone the guy in the mask is Billy Johnny because, uh, he just tells her he isn't. It's okay. It's okay. He's dead. I've taken care of everything. Come on, we got a show to put on. But oh no, he is. Chris tells security to get that guy, but instead he just stands around confused because all security guards in this movie suck. Then again, Johnny seems way more concerned about being a rock star than killing Lynn, which is very fortunate for Chris, who breaks a guitar over his head, electrocuting him to death. Fucking metal. And then the movie just ends. No wrap up whatsoever, that's just where it stops. Although this DVD does have a post-credits interview with Ferd and Beverly Sebastian where they talk about rescuing greyhounds. So, uh, there is that. And that's Rocktober Blood. Eh? It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. There's fun moments and the music is pretty catchy, but my god this thing is padded. Not ridiculously padded, but it sure drags its feet. I almost wonder if they made it about a rock band just to pad it out with musical numbers. It's pretty dull, it's got some charm, but I can't say I'd recommend it. Hey, if you like this one, there's Hard Rock Zombies, where uh, the rock stars who come back to life are the good guys. And I guess that about wraps it up for this Hold one. Hold up. Next episode's the episode where you show up in costume, right? Traditionally, yeah. And despite doing Metalween, you keep not doing metal costumes. How is McCready not metal? Alright, fine, I'll give you McCready. But last year you dressed up as the Nostalgia Critic. Well, that one was kind of a joke. I want to make sure you've got the most brutal, badass, heavy metal costume ever. Don't worry, I've got just the thing. That's right, y'all. It's gonna be a Bob Ross Halloween. alive and I won't believe he's dead till I see his body. I want it dug up. You talk it over with Chris. I'm not getting involved. I'm security, okay? Can I talk to you a minute? Some security you are. You suck. How are you gonna do a metal Halloween episode dressed as Bob Ross? I'm gonna show Hack a lantern. Yeah, that'll do it.